okay, let's find the indifference curves and marginal rate of substitution for this utility function where it's just food times shelter. Um, we can decide what we want to solve for. We're going to say u bar is equal to fs. And we'll do f up here and s down here. And this time we don't have a specific number. Uh, but if we want to solve for f, we just divide both sides by s. And we get that the indifference curve is u bar divided by s. Okay, so we can't precisely pick it, but if uh, u bar, whatever value u take happens to be, if s is equal to zero, anything divided by zero is infinity, or anything uh, positive. So we're going to start somewhere off the chart. Conversely, if s goes to infinity, this value here is going to get driven close to zero, closer and closer. So we basically end up with a curve that looks kind of like this. Okay, and this has utility u bar. Okay. What's the marginal rate of substitution? Well, we could take the derivative with respect to s. And in that case, uh, we need to find the derivative of that. It's useful, I think, to write this in this format. It makes it easier to see how we're going to use the exponent rule to find this. So the reciprocal rule is, since this is on the bottom with an implicit exponent of 1, we can also represent that as multiplying by s raised to the negative one. So the derivative, we're going to bring the negative one out front. We've still got that u bar, s, we have negative one, and then we have to subtract one from that. And this gives us our uh, value of this, which we could also write as u bar over s squared. We can also do, oh, sorry, there should be a negative in front. We can ask ourselves, does that make sense? Well, it's negative, and we can see from our diagram that the slope is negative. And it says that the slope is getting smaller and smaller as s gets big. Okay, It's getting closer and closer to 0. We're dividing by bigger numbers. And that also looks like it works out. As s gets larger and larger, this thing gets bent towards having a slope of 0. Alternatively, we could say the marginal rate of substitution is the marginal utility of s divided by the marginal utility of f. Here, these marginal utilities are really simple. The marginal utility of f, we take the derivative of this, the partial derivative with respect to f, and we get s, okay? Because we treat the s as a number. We just, it's not an f, so that we don't care about it. And then f is raised to the power of 1, so it's a really simple derivative. This guy, the marginal utility with respect to s, is also really simple. It's just equal to f. Okay? And so that tells us that this, uh, we take the marginal utility of s on top, negative f over s. Now, you look at this, and you look at this, and you can see, again, they don't match up. We had this problem before when we did production functions. But that's because one of them is using a u, and the other is not. And if we substitute one for the other, it's all going to actually work out fine. Okay, so let's use this equation first. Okay, if we plug in fs for u bar, one of the s's cancels with the square term, and we end up with negative f over s. So they indeed they do match. <laughs>